Do you know that in the 2020 labor force survey, Singapore actually has more self-employed persons ever since the pandemic? Whether it was really due to the pandemic or by choice, the fact here is there are definitely more self-employed persons on an increasing trend year over year. But do you know that as a self-employed, you have to take care of your own CPF contributions because you do not have an employer to contribute to your CPF anymore? So in this video, let us talk about some of the CPF strategies that self-employed persons can use so that they don't lose out on their retirement funds as well. What's up guys, it's Christopher from Honey Money SG and in this channel, we are all about building financial knowledge, teach money saving hacks and also help you lead a fulfilling quality of life. If you are a full-time employee working in a 9 to 5 job, then remember to take a look at my earlier CPF review and strategies video specifically on the OA, SA and the MA right here in this playlist so that you can learn about the strategies that I use to maximize my CPF. Anyway, in a recent poll that I did, I found out that more than 80 80% of you are actually working for a company or someone instead of being a self-employed or business owner. So the fact is this video will only address a very small group of minority which is probably made out of freelancers being a self-employed person. But if you're considering self-employment after a certain period of time or maybe you want to convert from a full-time job to a self-employment kind of work schedule then it may still be relevant for you. Not trying to bash 9 to 5 culture here but how many of us, especially millennials and Gen Z people, can actually envision us to work all the way until 65 years old for a company or someone else throughout your life without realizing what you actually want to do yourself? And I also believe some of you subscribe because you want to embark on a journey on finding your own financial independence. And that means you don't need to rely on your current corporate job because you have alternative sources of income. And it expands the option of taking up some freelance work for yourself. So so that you don't have to starve to death and maybe have more time for yourself or your family. So with that, if this topic too interests you, let's watch on to define what is a self-employed person. So I refer to IRA's website here where it defines what is the difference between employed and self-employed. So according to IRA's, you are employed as an employee if you perform work under a contract of service where you work under the control of your employer and you are self-employed when you perform work for others under a contract for service. So the the difference between these two terms are mainly in the definition of control. Are you under the control of someone or can you walk away without taking this job and look for other sources of income, right? Because under the 9 to 5 job, you are under a contract of service with your employer. That means your employer has to pay you this fixed amount every month because you are employed as a contract of service. While for freelance, you could just walk away and say, I don't want to work today and I won't receive income and that's okay. I'll do some more jobs next time. So some of the examples of self-employed people include tutors, private hire vehicle drivers or taxi drivers, food delivery rider, makeup artist, wedding photographer, videographer, electrician, plumber, Instagram influencers, and even YouTube creators. So if you are in these following categories, how can you maximize your CPF? Let's start off with the fundamental, MediSafe contribution. The law states that all self-employed persons earning a net trade income of above $6,000 per year is required to contribute to MediSafe. So your net trade income is your gross income minus your allowable business expenses and deductions as determined by the Inland Revenue Authority of Singapore, IRAS. Your amount of MediSafe contribution required will depend on your age as well as your annual net trade income defined by IRAS. And then you can use this calculator on the CPF website to calculate how much MediSafe that you need to contribute a year. But if you're interested to find out the formula, here is the formula that the CPF bot has given to you to do manual calculation. But in fact, if you're a freelancer doing your job as a full-time income, more likely than not, you will hit more than $6,000 a year in order for you to survive, right? And to be more reasonable, you will definitely hit above $18,000 a year if you want to put food on your table, which means you'll contribute the same MediSafe contribution as a full-time employee working for a company. And that means if you are below the age of 55, you'll contribute 8% of your monthly income into the MediSafe account. And if you have watched my CPF MediSafe account review video, you'll understand why it's so important to put money into your MediSafe account. Because not 
only it can help you pay your hospital and medical bills, but it can also help you pay for your integrated shield plans with the private insurers. With that, let me take you to the second strategy, which is to do a RSTU retirement sum top up to your special account. I've talked about the special account top up several times in my channel. You can refer to my top up video over here or my CPF SA review video over here. But basically what we want to do here is we want to top up our own special account with our own funds because not only special account has 4% annual interest a year but it is also eligible for tax relief specifically if you are below the age of 55 you will be topping up to your own special account up to $7,000 for tax relief but if you are above the age of 55 then you will top up to your own retirement account the other way is to top up to your family members special account specifically your parents or your parents in law special account or retirement account your grandparents special account or retirement account and for spouse or siblings their requirement is they are not earning any income above four thousand dollars for that year in order for you to qualify for tax relief so all in total you can contribute seven thousand dollars to your own account and seven thousand dollars to your family members account to get a total combined of fourteen thousand dollars of tax relief if you do a retirement sum top up the last way that you can enhance your cpf balances is to do a voluntary contributions to all your three cpf accounts by doing a voluntary contribution to your oa sa and ma account the portion that is allocated to your ma can also be offset as your medisave payable to your self-employed medisave contributions as discussed in our point number one and it is also eligible for tax relief purposes when you're doing your tax accessible income but of course there's a limit of how much you can contribute to your voluntary contribution which has three criteria. so the max tax relief you could get is the lower of one of these three namely 37 percent of your net trade income or cpf relief cap of $37,740 or the actual amount actually contributed by you and also iras explained here that if you do not have any trade accessible income for this year then all your voluntary contributions will not be allowed for any kind of tax relief function because you don't have an income to deduct from which makes no sense anyway because if you don't even have income you will not be taxed in the first place so why are you going to contribute cpf okay just to give a quick scenario let's say in your self-employed job you are earning hundred thousand dollars of singapore dollars a year net trade income your cpf relief cap will be 37 percent of your net trade income and that means thirty seven thousand dollars is the max that you can contribute to your cpf for tax relief so if you are below 35 years old eight percent of the 100k income is the amount of medisave that you need to contribute as mandatory contribution so that means eight thousand dollars and between eight thousand dollars to thirty seven thousand dollars you have a gap of $29,000 that you could do voluntary contribution to your CPF to enjoy the CPF relief for tax relief purposes. And let's say if you also want to do retirement sum top up of $7,000 to your own special account, that would not count into your voluntary contribution limit. So all in all, for a total of $37,000 of max tax relief, plus your $7,000 of retirement sum top up scheme, you can essentially deduct $44,000 of your net trade income and the remaining income will be subjected to tax so that's just a very simple example excluding all other kind of tax relief or tax deductions that you may enjoy but that's the idea behind all these cpf strategies and i hope you have learned something new or two and maybe share it to your friends and family if you have learned something new from this video do give a like and check out my other cpf strategy videos here so that you can consider subscribing to it remember to join my telegram group here as well my name is christopher this is honey money sg steering young adults to financial independence